So, <coughs> um, we get one of these uh, minima uh, of, uh, of the washboard potential we showed you before. So, uh, about uh, the, the, the complete one we have seen, we isolate one. And here we have all basic ingredients we need, like, uh, you know, when the junction is the superconducting state, the phase is rolling here and there is no voltage at the plasma frequency. That depends on the critical current, uh, apart from the, the current here. Uh, so from the slope of this, uh, uh, of this washable potential. Um, here there is a barrier that depends again on the Johnson energy and obviously will depend on the, on the, the slope of the curve from the current. And then uh, what can happen? So may happen that uh, here this uh, overcomes the barrier by thermal effect. This would be the escape rate and basically depends on the exponential between the barrier here and the temperature. Um, and uh, how to measure that in a junction? Basically what you can do is that you have, you have your IV curve and then you start uh, <coughs> ramping the current and you can also change the speed. You, you can do a lot of tests to make sure that you're doing the right things. And uh, the sweep rate, and then you'll see that there is some kind of distribution of switching currents. And this is sketched here. Then if you report the switching current distributions as a function of temperature, you see something quite uh, um, uh, in, remarkable in the sense that the width of the, of the, um, of the distribution decreases with the temperature. So this is telling us that these follow the temperature and these follow um, is a thermal effect. So uh, it's exactly the picture of this process. But what also happening and, and, uh, is that basically uh, the phase can do quantum tunneling through the barrier. And obviously this will these rates will depend on the the energy level that, that where the, the, the phase here is. So we may have uh, no, here gamma zero associated to the ground states and gamma one associated to the first one. Uh, this obviously opens some ca somehow um, a lot of scenarios. Um, let me also mention, this we'll discuss uh, quite carefully in the following, but let's immediately say this is uh, that this escape, uh, quantum escape rate that doesn't depend on temperature, depends on Q which is the quality factor. And here is proportion to the resistance, the capacitance and the plasma frequency. Again here it's important to understand that if you don't un are able to understand this from the junctions, you are in trouble to understand the, the, the Q factor. And so the quality, and in other words, if this dissipation is too uh, high, in particular Q is too low, uh, you, you risk to lose the, um, the quantum tunneling. That here in IV curves we see as a saturation of the width of the distribution. Obviously this uh, saturation um, doesn't mean that it's a quantum effect necessarily. You need to be sure that it's not noise, I was telling to your answer before. Since that this you could measure and be happy to it, but could be completely hidden by noise. You need to do something else and uh, to do that you need to, to have some kind of in situ knob and uh, uh, this again uh, I, I'm going to discuss uh, the experiment more largely that you basically uh, this is the crossover temperature between the thermal behavior and the quantum behavior. This depends on Q, so on the, on the Q factor, on the coupling. And, uh, uh, but very interesting, uh, here you have, uh, this is the original measurements without magnetic field. So if you apply magnetic field, you are changing critical current. If you are changing critical current, you are changing plasma frequency. If you are changing plasma frequency, you are tuning crossover temperature. So what is extremely important if you want to do this experiment in a successful way is that you need 
to change magnetic field, you need, you need the in situ knob to tune plasma frequency and crossover temperature. As done here, where we can see without magnetic field and with a mag bit of magnetic field, where there is a change of cross TC crossover. And uh, um, um, these, yes, yes. Is the histogram the result of, of many rounds? Yes. Uh, it's only one way. Uh, in typically, you know, so thanks for asking me. I, I for later, I would have shown the, the setup measure. It's basically, you know, uh, in our cases, there are 10,000 events. Uh, you know, you repeat for each uh, temperature, you ramp the current uh, 10,000 times, and you build this histogram. You build this histogram. Then you report this histogram as a function. Uh, as a function of temperature, and this is the, the experimental outcome. So these are, for each of them, uh, 10,000 events for all temperatures, and, uh, and then you, you, you measure the sigma, and you plot the sigma as a function of temperature. Um, and you see that in some, you know, where it depends. This is the first naive approach that I'm going to tell you. Then we'll see that some kind of more sophistications come out by investigating these behaviors. But this is, this is somehow, I would say, direct clear fingerprint. Um, and also to, to uh, these are data from our junctions, but, uh, uh, but we'll come to that later. But what is, you know, just to give a, uh, an account of also historic development with all the bibliographic sources. You know, the first measurements were done by Fulton Dunkelberger. Here we're not talking the 70s, not even of anything quantum. They just um, find a way to, to how to correlate this probability, this reaching distributions uh, with the lifetime. And, you know, so that they can translate this into escape rates. Uh, this was also <coughs> used shortly later by Group uh, IBM uh, Web and um, Bell Labs, and they are the very first measurements where this is the IV curves, again measuring the distribution here uh, with some events. But for sure, all these first experiments were missing something because they didn't know. Um, all details of uh, electromagnetic behavior disjunctions, and the very and the, the complete experiment is the one by the group uh, of um, uh, John Clark, the Berkeley group, the Warren Martinez, uh, uh, a few papers, and uh, and uh, here um, a part what I've just discussed here uh, uh, with the. Um, uh, with distribution as a function of temperature, there was also a very neat demonstration of uh, a half applying microwave. You could uh, populate the different energy levels inside the well. And uh, um, obviously, I'm not going into the details, but uh, I want you know, to tell the young people that this is an amazing, beautiful paper. The one, not this one, is the FISREV B two years later of 87. The first author is Martinez, where there is such an amazing and detailed discussion of uh, all the measurements. And in order to be sure that this, this was correct, I mean, it's not this enough. They make some kind of uh, consistent estimation of all electrodynamical parameters. They want to make sure. They made a lot of different tests. So at the end of this behavior, you have to come out with some kind of uh, reasonable numbers for the capacitance, the recent junction, and also, as we'll see shortly, by the noise you can get from the environment. So all this has to be self-consistent, and you need to associate to this a capacitance. You need to understand if you have stray capacitance, if you have noise from the environment, what from the junction, which is dominating. And obviously, this brings to a lot of investigation that were made afterwards about this quantum decay, because at the end, this is some kind of quantum decay from the well, where you know, uh, understand uh, how dissipation would affect. This is somehow the initial part that what is fully exploited in qubits, but these are the, the original, the original problems that inspire, you know, that that you need to take into account when you deal with these problems. 
So at this point, I, I, you know, I take the first um, um, slide they put when, you, when we said, you know, if we want to use, the, you know, as Martini was saying, that the first idea of qubit was in the 80s, when you were asking if a macroscopic degree of freedom can have this typical quantum behavior. So these experiments demonstrate that basically this junction, if we can undertake macroscopic quantum tunneling or quantization of energy levels, which is the concept which is behind the population of different states, this means that we can work on this macroscopic degree of freedom. And obviously now the point is to understand dissipation and uh, so now we are, we have, you know, we are fully habilitated to, to use this kind of, of uh, you know, this would be what we have discussed before. You know, this just indicates that this is without dissipation. When there is dissipation, you start worrying about these processes. But again, you can put the junction inside the loop and you can start wondering uh, how to work with the phase. So now we have somehow the strong background that we can go farther. And uh, this is basically, but uh, uh, um, we had excellent talk from Fermi also this afternoon, so I'm not going to give any details, but you obviously understand what um, we're discussing yesterday about phase qubits. So this kind of measurement, this kind of structure with the two energy levels, they are the two first states of the simplest qubit, which is the phase qubit. Obviously, we know that it is not so, so um, uh, performing, but it's clear how uh, the relation with what we have discussed up to now. This is the, the logical continuation of these measurements of microscopic quantum effects. And this is the, the you know, um, I, I was coming to your question. You know, this is uh, one of, the, this is, for instance, our system. Uh, these are the events. You need a lot of different stage of filters. And uh, uh, this is the distribution. Uh, obviously, you need to go to very low temperatures. Then you can work on, the, on a lot of details. Obviously, the, the crucial part is the filtering and the nature of the junction. And uh, uh, as I will show you later, measuring different junctions to give you some kind of ideas. So um, I want to, 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 uh, to start. So I've shown you that this was done on Niobium junctions and the Martinez group made all clear benchmarks of what should happen if you want to do a careful experiment. Now <coughs> these are uh, bipitaxel junctions that we uh, did on our own. Actually, this, the idea is that you have, uh, uh, for instance, strontium titanate substrates, and then if you have uh, a seed layer of um, MgO cerium oxide, you have uh, on that, then you pattern with the photolithography, you have the two electrodes, and here you have a 0, 0, 001 growth, and here you have a 103 growth. What is nice about uh, uh, using serum oxide uh, seed layer is that you also have a rotation in plane. And so from the point of view of the wave order parameter, you have a, a very nice uh, uh, junctions where changing the interface orientation, you can have the phase where open the parameters are facing each other and when the lobe is facing a node like in this case and how it was uh, at the beginning of the movie. Uh, this is a picture, same picture of the junction, and what I would like, you know, this is the 103 grow and this is the axis screw. And uh, this junction, uh, that it's always my, 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 my point of view that, you know, um, uh, Johnson effect is much stronger than whatever impurity can happen <laughs> uh, between, and, and because there is some kind of intrinsic coherence. But for some of these junctions, for in particular for this orientation, where 0, 0, 001 and 103 meet, we have some kind of basal plane green boundary, which is atomically perfect. Uh, I'm not able to do, you know, uh, we are not even able to, to think that, but nature makes on its own. I mean, there are two different fast growths here, and when you have the, the nice growth, you have a perfect junction because this is the fast direction of growth and this is the fast direction. And so they meet and they form a, some kind of atomically flat interface. Um, again, from our point of view, what is uh, interesting is that you have here a uh, lobe facing a node, so in principle this would be a very uncomfortable situation because you have 
low energy quasi particles which are source of dissipation and you would not expect high quality factor you would not expect to have a, a junction with showing macroscopic quantum tunneling effect but actually that's uh, another important demonstration of the D-wave effect is that if we measure the current as a function of the orientation angle, we get exactly the D-wave profile. So we could check on this specific sample that uh, if we would measure here, we would have a lobe facing a node. And actually, these are the, the, with the different configurations. You know, when you have a maximum lobe to lobe, lobe to node here. So uh, this was a demonstration with the, with the collaboration with Chalmers of the macroscopic quantum tunneling effect. And again, here you see the saturation, the tuning of the magnetic field, the thermal part, and on these junctions. And actually, in the second step, we also did the further advance. We applied microwaves, and we could see also the, the, um, you know, the two states, not, not only the ground states, but also the, the, the first excited states. And this is somehow of consolidated after uh, um, uh, Devore, Martinez, and uh, Clark uh, uh, protocol. So we, we change the, the power, and we see that the, the, the peak switches, and there are some kind of intermediate powers where we have the two of them, the two states occupied. So it means that here, tunneling is dominating here in the blue one. Uh, in the, uh, here is just the first excited states. In this case, there are both of them. And uh, uh, again, as I've shown you before, this is again, the, the, you know, some kind of similar uh, um, <coughs> procedure to what used by the, the Berkeley group. Um, this is, comes from uh, Alexei Ostinov group. Uh, actually, this kind of transition from the ground states to the first level and so far can also happen with the different photons. You know, this can be not only one shot, but can be supplied by different photons. And here, you, you need to do that. You need some kind of little sophisticated considerations on the power you put and on the, on the frequency that you use. And uh, if we try to understand uh, about high TC, you know, the, the point is that actually by proving macroscopic quantum tunneling, we are able to show that, uh, you know, the junctions, uh, these, you know, we, this state is well defined. And uh, so the dissipation is much less than expected. From the point of view, so yes. Yeah. Why your face is fluctuating between these two orbitals? Uh, no, this is not. Sorry, I, I didn't. Say, no, this is uh, this is, is not a phase. phase. No, 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 no. This is uh, this is uh, uh, um, just to say that quasi particles may scatter. This is just to say that here you could have some kind of noise because this is not superconducting here. This is just a cartoon. This uh, means that. Uh, in principle, you have very strong dissipation because you are facing a node. Uh, you have to imagine that here, uh, it means that you have quasi-particles at very low energies. And these, so the fact that uh, uh, we observe macroscopic quantum tunneling is somehow uh, means that uh, for whatever mechanism that we don't know, uh, uh, it's like the, fa you know, quasi-particles are locked. They are not producing too much noise to prevent the observation of microscopic quantum tunnel. This has been, you know, uh, we have also discussed with, with, with the, uh, Tony Leggett, you know, was thinking that this would be impossible because of these quasi-particles. And the point is that, you know, the importance to have scattering. Maybe here you don't have enough space for scattering, or may also happen that we consider that could also have a little imaginary component. But as a matter of fact, we could see microscopic quantum tunneling. And uh, um, also concerning this, uh, this kind of logical path that we are following junctions and how they <coughs> manifest uh, quantum um, effects independent. You, you don't need to be necessarily aluminum or niobium to, to show microscopic uh, quantum effect. These are, I mentioned you before, the, the uh, ferromagnetic junctions, 
um, here I just want to stress the difference. Uh, in general, people they use ferromagnetic, um, some kind of ferromagnetic me metals here. They are in the sense that these barriers are very <coughs> uh, uh, transmissive. Um, the Cambridge group was also able to produce ferro insulator, which is gadolinium nitride as a barrier and is some kind of uh, um, insulating. So it's an insul insul ferro insulator barrier with the, and you see that from the IV curves, which is hysteretic, so there's some kind of capacitance associated and it's different from all the other junctions made with the ferromagnetic, there are some kind of overdumped. So this is uh, the first underdumped Johnson junction with insulators and actually uh, again we have uh, this typical magnetic pattern of uh, um, ferromagnetic junctions with the memory effect and uh, David will talk more in his talk but also on these junctions we have measured microscopic quantum tunneling effect. So again here we have the experimental data, we change the magnetic field and we could see a tuning of the crossover temperature. Again here what is interesting is interesting that uh, you know uh, we don't want to push the argument says that this is triple current, whatever. We, we are conservative on that in the sense that also further, from our point of view, there is no indications of anything special happening. But for sure, what is important is that the very first junctions with the ferromagnetic behavior that exhibits microscopic quantum tunneling. So also in this case, the quantum phase can do its part, but uh, you know, whatever magnetic activity is in in the barrier, it somehow, in terms of dissipation, below the threshold that you prevent you from observing microscopic quantum tunneling. That's, that's the, the, the conclusion. Um, and uh, completing this overview about uh, microscopic quantum tunneling effect, also in a squid can be proved, and this, for instance, has been made by Sean Han from Kansas University. And again, there are the, these switching current distribution measurements. And the, obviously here, you may have two degrees of freedom. So, uh, up to now, we have been considering uh, this process. Uh, running state, what may happen is that actually, uh, after falling down, the, the particle can be trapped in one of these valleys just below. This has been, uh, you know, uh, since the, the, the early 90s, uh, with, some exper exper with some ideas, experiments and guesses, and, uh, and we'll see how um, this can be somehow pushed and implemented and to have from this, again, from switching current distribution, some kind of fingerprints about dissipation and in this case not anymore only the running state and the, the but also multiple escape and retrapping events well, that we call with phase diffusion. This happens in junctions with intermediate Q factors. So these are junctions that are um, uh, not so great in terms of, uh, of a Q factor, so that's in principle junction that you would not like to put in a very advanced quantum circuit, but there are junctions that may have some kind of other advantages in terms of the fact that, for instance, they, they, you know, that's the best you can get from the technology, from a kind of barrier, from a semiconductive barrier, or topological barrier, whatever, but if you understand how dissipation works, you can use it in some kind of smart uh, device. Um, obviously, this responds to the obvious uh, question that basically, uh, in a nano world, when you reduce IC, uh, you are obviously Increasing, decreasing just on energy compared to, couple, to charging energy. And so uh, this re results in a reduction of the quality factor and increase of dissipation. And uh, what is nice is that, um, and I'm going to discuss, that you can measure this dissipation somehow uh, in an accurate way. Uh, again here, I want to, to recall uh, I really have shown a couple of them that uh, just to, to go back to the historical that uh, 
we already know a lot about this uh, uh, mesoscopic physics at the time uh, the time where these uh, this, uh, phase diffusion effects were discussed and uh, uh, and also here I would like to remind this beautiful experiment where you know Arno bomb oscillations were enhanced by superconducting mirrors just to frame that we, we at that time we already knew a lot about uh, this effect on mesoscopic physics nevertheless there was the need to to uh, Uh, the, uh, it's slow just charging of the task. Okay, good. <laughs> so, um, uh, we knew already a lot, but we, okay, this is already now went too fast. Okay, good. So, what I want to. Okay, so we want to analyze this phenomenon. Uh, you may have this uh, escape from the well by thermal uh, activation, microscopic quantum tunneling, and then you would have the running state. Now we consider this phase diffusion effect. How to see them? So with switching currents, you can see something very nice because this is the, the behavior I've discussed up to now, where we have the thermal part and then the quantum part. Here, the thermal part with the quantum part. This is the crossover temperature, and the uh, you know this crossover temperature we know it's proportional to the plasma frequency what appears in the in the switching probability distribution when the critical current is uh, low so where we are in normal conditions ideal conditions to measure um, phase diffusion is that uh, something really qualitatively different happens in the sense that the curves start to increase the peak and the width start to decrease and there is this kind of dramatic uh, decrease of the sigma as a function of temperature that starts from a, a uh, characteristic temperature that we call uh, you know, some kind of again um, um, uh, we call here T0 and it's proportional to IC, but it's again signaling that there is some kind of transition in the system. Uh, these process start to be dominating on the thermal process. And uh, uh, if you try to, uh, again, what I would suggest that uh, these are, you know, they are not little effects. These are very clear, neat effects. Here it decreases. So it's some kind of qualitative change in your, in your sample that you understand that something quite different is happening. And uh, uh, actually, what is happening from is that uh, these we can visualize like that that this is the process uh, this way and this other way um, uh, below this is the thermal process and this is above this crossover temperature. Uh, you, you see also a modification of the shape of IV curves. This is asymmetric and this starts to be some kind of Gaussian. What I want to say is that basically when the junction is more dissipative you see some kind of very clear uh, fingerprints of, the, of a completely different behavior and where now the point is that uh, it traps in the valleys, in the following valleys, because there is dissipation that the system is, is receiving from the environment. And this you can measure clearly with this and with other quantitative analysis that I'm going to, to discuss with you. Uh, so uh, just to tell that uh, also in this case you can be very accurate. You can change magnetic field and you see perfect uh, um, uh, correlation between experimental curve and theoretical curves uh, made with Monte Carlo simulations. Um, uh, this is also a technical tool that we use to measure. This is the second moment that we call, we call skewness and actually we see that we enter into the um, when we enter into the phase diffusion part, the skewness change, so the curve becomes from asymmetric symmetric, and uh, uh, the, the skewness tends to be uh, zero. Skewness is somehow the measurement of how much is asymmetric the distribution. Um, again, these are uh, 
these are somehow further insight in something that is coherent with what's uh, also in Leandro group before uh, in, a, in a less systematic way. These are also o o overdumped uh, junctions and also by other groups, the one of Pecola in Finland and the one of Jim Lukens in Stony Brook. And uh, again, as you can see here, you know, there is the quantum part, then there is the thermal part, and there is then this uh, um, fall off of the, the width. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, without Monte Carlo simulations. And actually, what uh, um, we also